welcome to Rocky Broad Solar, where we encourage you to make the current flow. On today's episode, we're going to talk about installing ring security camera ecosystem around your home and the tips and tricks to make your installation successful. Let's get into it. So there's many things you want to consider when planning out your ring security camera installation. And, uh, you know, you're really taking the time up front to plan your system and, and decide what's going to work for your individual needs is really going to ensure that you have a successful installation in the long run. So for my project, I ended up going with uh, the Ring Spotlight Cam Plus outdoor cameras. Uh, they include a little floodlight, security light, and camera all in one. And then I had the doorbell hardwired for my doorbell. I already had an existing uh, doorbell where, where this one went and took its place. Um, I got the ring chime where you just kind of plug it in in your home and that acts as the doorbell chime to alert you when somebody's ringing your doorbell. Um, and then lastly, I went with the hardwired version um, because, you know, there are several factors that led me to that. One, I'm a licensed electrician. Um, I don't mind doing electrical work and, and really I wouldn't want to be spending my weekends and my time, you know, getting on a ladder, replacing batteries, charging batteries. Um, it's just not something I would do. I'd rather put in the time and effort up front to just hardwire it and be done with it. Now, one thing that did surprise me was that when I ordered the Spotlight Cam Plus hardwired, that I opened the box and I saw it was Spotlight Cam Plus batteries showed up. And at first I thought I got the wrong product or something got shipped wrong. Well, it turns out they're the same product. The only difference is the uh, Spotlight Cam Plus hardwired comes with this hardwired kit for cameras where you can kind of retroactively turn a battery system into a hardwired version. So that, that was uh, something interesting. Lastly, when you um, hardwire your cameras, it, it gives you better image quality and the, the quality is crisper and cleaner. And for me, if I'm gonna spend my time and effort installing a security system, I wanna make sure that the photo quality that I get is as good as possible. So before installing my system, one of the things I did was walked around outside, looked at my existing lights and kind of uh, the setup where I wanted my cameras to, to cover around my home. Uh, in my case, I did not have a lot of existing electrical uh, exterior lighting. And so I had to run all new circuits and new boxes to the vast majority of the locations where I wanted them. A lot of you at home may have existing floodlights that are in a good location, and in your case, it's gonna be much easier. You can just take the existing floodlight out, replace it with a ring security cam floodlight, and you know you won't have to pull that wire or run new electrical. One of the cameras to cover all of my major entrances to the home, so in that case, that was the front doors, the uh, back porch door, and the basement door. But after that, I really had a lot of areas where, you know, they were uncovered, they were unlit. And at night, if I'm walking around my yard, I wanna be able to see. And that's been something that's kind of annoyed me about this property for quite some time. And so I went ahead and bought three additional Defiant LED motion sensor lights to install. Uh, one, so that if I'm walking around at night, I can see what I'm doing basically anywhere around my home. And then two, you know, even though those aren't security cameras, in most cases, a uh, bright motion light is going to deter anybody that's really snooping around or up to no good. Thirdly, those lights are very affordable and inexpensive. And, and really, uh, once those lights are in place and wired up, if I do decide to upgrade in the future to more ring security cameras, I can easily just swap them out. And I really won't feel that bad about it due to the price for the LED lights. So if you don't really have a lot of electrical experience and you're not comfortable, uh, you know, wiring up high voltage uh, electrical current, the, you know, hardwiring your system may not be the best option for you. Everybody's needs are different and everybody's uh, individual expertise are different. And so, you know, wiring up electrical is not really something to be taken lightly. It is dangerous and it can kill you. So uh, for if you're just kind of a average Joe at home wanting to install some cameras around your house, those battery versions really aren't that bad. I mean, it's really, you put it together in a couple minutes, 
mount it to the wall and you're done and you have a security system. And you know what? So what if you don't get crisp, clean quality? Um, you know, you, you can see what's going on. You know when someone's there. You can make out uh, people and cars, you know, regardless of the, the image quality. Now, if you're replacing an old doorbell with a new ring doorbell hardwired, one thing that you need to do is hunt down your existing doorbell transformer and find out what voltage it is. Uh, in my case, my existing doorbell transformer was 10 volts. And so that is not enough voltage for the ring security uh, doorbell hardwired. It wants 24 volts. If you're not sure if you can locate that doorbell transformer, generally you're just gonna be hunting down a two wire, low voltage wire in your attic or basement or wherever it may be. Um, you find your transformer and it's gonna be etched into the nameplate on the back what kind of voltage it provides. So in my case, I got a Defiant Trivolt transformer. This kind of covers pretty much anything you need as far as low voltage. Uh, in my case, I use the two outside terminals to get 24 volts, but it has three terminals that, you know, depending on the two terminals that you decide to choose, you can get an array of different voltages. So once I determined where I wanted my cameras at and my security lights, I went ahead and climbed up in the attic and kind of crawled around and made sure that I could actually get Romex wire to those locations. Um, you know, before you start drilling holes, you really want to make sure that uh, you're sure that it's gonna work the way it is because once you drill a hole, you know, it takes a lot of time and effort to patch it up if you need to. So, um, I kind of de determined the best places where I could definitely get to. I, I pre-drilled a pilot hole and um, went ahead and used a four inch hole saw and a right angle drill to drill my holes. Um, after the holes were drilled, I went ahead and pulled my Romex wire from uh, the exterior up into the attic to my central junction box where everything is gonna head down to the basement and eventually to my critical loads panel. Um, one critical component, if you're not an electrician and you're not used to pulling wire, um, buying one of these wire spoolers is really gonna be in your best interest. Uh, they make them where they can hook on a, a two by four stud, which is what a lot of con contractors use for new construction because there's always studs around a new construction home during the, uh, the electrical phase of pulling wire. In my case, I just use the, the sort of uh, floor stand and mount where, where as you pull wire, it unspools it. So you're not gonna have a rat's nest and have everything tangled up. It's all gonna come out in one nice, clean, straight wire that can be stapled in. It's gonna be nice, neat, and pretty. And it also saves you from needing really a second hand. So for my project, I installed a dedicated 15 amp single pole or a 120 volt circuit for my security installation. And so the wire that ran from that 15 amp breaker it was, ended up being 14 to Romex. Um, and so uh, the other part is that I used the old work four inch round box. So um, if for other people that again, aren't electricians, you can get a new work box or an old work box for really any electrical equipment. Um, old work is for retrofits, new work is for new construction. So a new work, you'd nail it into a stud, they drywall around it at a later time. For old work, right, that's where you already have a home built and you're trying to install it retroactively. Um, those, you drill the hole, you put the box in and you use a screwdriver or, or an impact driver and, and, it, and it rotates some little locking tabs around that goes and squeezes on to your plywood or drywall or whatever medium you're working with. For wiring up your cameras, it's pretty basic, uh, I'm, you know, basic electrical. You're, you're connecting your, uh, your bare copper to ground or green, your white to white, which is your neutral, and your black to black which is your current carrying conductors. Now, if anything I'm saying here is confusing to you, um, you may wanna look into hiring an electrician for your specific installation. So once I had all my uh, hardwire kits hardwired in, next I moved on to installing the actual Ring Spotlight Cam Pluses. Um, I made sure they all had the batteries in them because when the power is out, um, while my home is not backed up with solar and batteries, I want those cameras to continue to function. Um, so they will still function based on battery power 
And then once I have my critical load sub panel back up to solar and batteries, I will have the ability to just have that running hardwired at all times. So once I had all my hardwired kits installed and wired up, I moved on to installing the Spotlight Cam Pluses. I made sure that I put the charged batteries in them first. And you know, I played around with everything on the kitchen counter, read the instructions and made sure I knew how everything went together before I was up on the ladder just to make things easier. It is very simple, a um, couple minutes and you know, you'll have it down pat. So um, I installed all my security cameras and moved on to the doorbell hardwired. Now the doorbell hardwired um, needs a little more room to get to terminals and wire than your average old doorbell. And in my case, that wire was not long enough so I installed a little six inch jumper, used some Wago connectors to connect the existing wire to my little jumper. And that gave me plenty of room to get to the terminals without putting any stress on the wire or the, the ring doorbell. Uh, I built a little piece of trim around it. It doesn't look that great, but I plan on um, getting a new storm door for the front of my house in the near future. And at that point, I'm gonna redo all the trim around the door regardless. So I just, uh, you know, cut a little piece of scrap trim to suffice for now. So I got my doorbell hardwired up and mounted. I went ahead and plugged in my chime in uh, the kitchen, which is relatively in the middle of the home where you can kind of hear it from anywhere in my home personally. And, um, and kind of from there, uh, I, you know, everything was wired up. Everything was ready to go, except one last thing. And that was getting my, my actual circuit that was running down to my critical load sub panel, hardwired into my circuit breaker. Now, again, if you're not an electrician, this is the most dangerous point of your installation because you're working inside of a panel that, you know, if you touch the wrong lug, maybe you, you've got 240 volts, 200 amps, you know, depending on the size of your uh, service. And, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, I really do not recommend someone to wire up circuit breakers in their electrical panel. Um, you know, maybe if you're doing it yourself or you do everything else and then just have an electrician come over to do that portion. That's up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. So, um, what I did is I pulled my Romex into my critical load sub panel. I terminated my ground to my ground bar, my neutral to my neutral bar, and took the current carrying conductor or the hot wire and terminated it into my 15 amp uh, security camera circuit breaker. Uh, so that was just a single pole 15 amp breaker. I got everything uh, installed. I put my dead front cover back on and I went ahead and hit my circuit breaker. Um, so at that point, I kind of went around and started using my app to scan the barcodes. Now, I, I didn't do that actually at first, and a lot of the barcodes were hard to get for to. So I actually just scanned the barcodes on my boxes and did it. Unfortunately, it'll ask you like, what camera are you scanning? Um, and I didn't really know, and I had to kind of make it up and then go back and edit it. So if I were you, as I was doing this, I would take my camera before I go to install that, I would write on the box, uh, you know, back door. And that way, when you go to scan the codes on your specific products to set up your system, um, you already know what camera goes where. And so you know what to name it when you're setting up the app. The app was really straightforward and simple. Mine did glitch up a little bit, but I think maybe that was because I didn't have the best um, Wi-Fi reception to some of my locations in my home. Um, so I actually had to kind of reset, turn my phone off and on, kind of, it, it really took a while, but um, after that uh, initial setup time, everything went smooth. Um, so, you know, I got everything set up on the apps. I got uh, everything installed. And, you know, then I just started kind of walking around the yard, playing with the system, uh, testing the motion capabilities, and just kind of getting, the, getting used to the app. Um, again, it's pretty straightforward, really uh, user-friendly and easy to, to, to use. And, um, you know, I'm not gonna really go into too many details about that specific part. So after a few weeks of using the Ring products, you know, I'm pretty happy with the installation. Now I am gonna come up on my 30 day kind of mark soon and that's when I'm gonna to have to subscribe to the Ring subscription in order to get kind of these uh, 
bells and whistles such as saving your videos and things of that nature. I do plan on subscribing to that and just kind of getting the most out of my security system. If you or someone you know are installing Ring products around your home, I'm gonna leave some links in the description down below as well as in my storefront for the products that I use for my installation. If you found value in today's content, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe, press the notification bell, or leave a comment down in the description below. Uh, again, I really sincerely appreciate each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, take care.